TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories... Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu emphasizes Israel's resolve to guarantee its independence when it comes to thwarting Iran's path to a nuclear bomb. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrives in Israel, during which he stresses Washington's intention to help rehabilitate the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. Egyptian Foreign Minister Samir Shoukri visits Ramallah during which he voices Cairo's hope to try and revive a political process with the aim of ending the Israel-Palestinian conflict. The State of Israel aims to use all of the tools at its disposal to thwart the Islamic Republic of Iran from arming itself with a nuclear weapon. At a special ceremony of the Mossad intelligence agency that was held yesterday, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu announced the appointment of David Barnea as the next director of Mossad and laid upon him the profound weight of steering the agency and Jerusalem's divine mission to ensure the future of the Jewish state and its peoples. <laughs> בשילוב זרועות וכוחות עם כל הגורמים ובהובלה שלך יוסי ואני רוצה, יהיה זמן להודות לך בצורה מסודרת אבל היום אני רוצה להגיד לכם שיהיה המשך אני מודיע על מינויו של דוד ברנע לראש המוסד הבא הקבוע כדי שהמוסד במדינת ישראל ימשיכו בדרך ההישגים להבטיח את ביטחון ישראל. והמשימה הראשונה שלך, כמו לך יוסי, כמו לכל אחד מכם, זה למנוע מאיראן מלהתחמש בנשק גרעיני. זו משימת העל. Outgoing Mossad director Yossi Cohen, for his part, sees the opportunity to highlight the prime objectives of the Israeli intelligence agency as part of its quest to safeguard Israel's national security interests. שגרת יומו של המוסד היא המלחמה, המלחמה החשאית. אנחנו מבצעים כל הזמן, בכל מקום, פעולות מבצעיות רבות מספור המתלכדות לאגרופים רבי עוצמה. מבצעים אלה מביאים מודיעין חיוני למדינת ישראל, מסכלים נשק בלתי קונבנציונלי, מסכלים טרור וריגול, וכאשר רק אפשר, פורצים דרכים חדשות לשלום ולשיתוף פעולה אזורי. It is important to highlight that Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu also utilized his speech, which was for the most part rendered classified, to signal the United States of Israel's resolve to guarantee its independence when it comes to thwarting Iran's path to a nuclear bomb that ahead of the arrival of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. <laughs> וזה חלק מנדבך הביטחון הלאומי שלנו. אבל יכולים להיות מצבים שבו היעד העליון שלנו להבטיח שחבורת היתולות לא יפסיקו את קיום אלפי השנים של העם היהודי יחייב אותנו להחליט החלטות אמיצות ועצמאיות. מדינת ישראל לא תאפשר לאיראן להתחמש בנשק גרעיני. ובכל מצב, בלי קשר להסכם, עם הסכם, בלי הסכם, אנחנו נעשה הכל כדי למנוע מאיראן מלהתחמש בנשק גרעיני, כי מדובר בקיום שלנו. Subsequently, Washington's top diplomat landed at Tel Aviv Ben Gurion International Airport this morning as part of his first trip to the Middle East since assuming his post. Secretary Blinken immediately traveled to Jerusalem, where he held a relatively lengthy meeting with Premier Netanyahu, focusing most of their discussions on regional developments, including vis-à-vis -vis the Gaza Strip and the Islamic Republic of Iran, respectively. We discuss many regional issues, but none is greater than Iran. And I can tell you that I hope that the United States will not go back to the old G JCPOA, because we believe that that deal paves uh, the way for Iran to have an arsenal of uh, nuclear weapons with international legitimacy. Um, we also reiterated that whatever happens, Israel will always 
reserve the right to defend itself against a regime committed to our destruction, committed to getting the weapons of mass destruction for that end. We had a detailed discussion about Israel's security needs, including replenishing uh, Iron Dome. We'll continue to strengthen all aspects of our longstanding partnership. And that includes consulting closely with Israel, as we did today, uh, on uh, the ongoing negotiations in Vienna around a potential return to the Iran nuclear agreement uh, at the same time as we continue to work together to counter Iran's destabilizing actions uh, in the region. Regarding the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, both Secretary Blinken and Premier Netanyahu discussed a way forward following the implementation of the Egyptian brokered ceasefire. It includes both efforts to deter the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip, alongside intentions by the United States to lead humanitarian activities aimed at rehabilitating the Palestinian enclave. Intense uh, behind-the-scenes uh, diplomacy led by President Biden, working very closely with, um, with the Prime Minister, helped produce last week's ceasefire. Now we believe we must uh, build on it. That starts with the recognition that uh, losses on both sides uh, were profound. Casualties are often reduced uh, to numbers. But behind every number is an individual human being, a daughter, a son, a father, a mother, a grandparent, a best friend. Uh, and as the Talmud teaches, uh, to lose a life is to lose the whole world, whether that life is Palestinian or Israeli. If Hamas breaks the calm and attacks Israel, our response will be very powerful. And we have uh, discussed ways of how to work together to prevent Hamas uh, rearmament uh, with the weapons uh, and means of uh, aggression. I underscored uh, to the Prime Minister something that President Biden made crystal clear throughout the violence. The United States fully supports Israel's right to defend itself against attacks, such as the thousands of rockets fired by Hamas indiscriminately against uh, Israeli civilians. Uh, as for peace itself with the Palestinians, a formal peace, I think President Biden was absolutely correct when he said, you're not going to get peace until Israel is recognized as an independent Jewish state. And uh, that is the key. I couldn't agree more with President Biden. We know that to prevent a return to violence, uh, we have to use the space created uh, to address a larger set of underlying uh, issues and challenges. Uh, and that begins with tackling the grave humanitarian situation in Gaza and starting to rebuild. Um, the United States will work to rally international support uh, around that effort while also making our own significant contributions, including some that I'll announce later today. Uh, we'll work with our partners uh, closely with, uh, uh, with all to ensure that Hamas does not benefit from the uh, reconstruction assistance. It is worth mentioning that ahead of Secretary Blinken's arrival in Israel, the IDF coordinator of government activities in the territories announced the entry of humanitarian equipment from Israel into the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, including medical equipment, food, medicines, and fuel to the private sector. Moreover, Gazan patients in need of life-saving medical treatment have been transferred to Israeli hospitals for treatment, and the fishing zones in the Palestinian enclave have also been reopened. Meanwhile, in the West Bank city of Ramallah, Egyptian Foreign Minister Samih Shukri held a meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, during which he highlighted Cairo's aspiration to capitalize on the ceasefire reached for Gaza, alongside indications of political will from the international community, to try and revive a political process to end the decades-old Israel-Palestinian conflict. تنبئ بوجود اهتمام دولي يجب أن يترجم إلى مسار لسعادة العملية السياسية للتوصل إلى حل دائم وشامل للقضية الفلسطينية تضمن الحقوق المشروعة للشعب الفلسطيني وفي مقدمتها إقامة دولته المستقلة. 
Meanwhile, in Brussels, a special European Council heads of state meeting of the 27-member bloc was held yesterday and today, in which a wide variety of topics were discussed, including the Israel-Palestinian conflict. At a press briefing that followed the special summit, European Commission President Charles Michel reaffirmed the European Union's position. We welcome the ceasefire. That was a necessary and important step. And we are convinced that the situation requires a robust political solution. And we reaffirmed our commitment to a two-state solution. It is necessary to highlight that Europe's 27-member union is deeply divided on the Israeli-Palestinian issue, with countries such as Ireland vocally promoting the Palestinian narrative within the EU institution, as opposed to countries such as Austria and Hungary, who have taken upon themselves to protect the Israeli position in Brussels. Thank you for watching us. I would like to encourage you today to join TV7 Israel and me in fervently praying for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel, alongside prayers for the salvation and peace of Denmark, as well as for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.